again. I just don't give him my camera. I'm picking it up. Sorry about that. Hi my lovelies, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a topic I've been wanting to cover for a really long time and I didn't even know it. So amidst the pandemic of 2020, um, I just did what like anyone would do and I hogged into my webkins. We were all losing our minds and you know, used what we had to occupy ourselves. I know a lot of you can relate, don't deny it. So yes, I decided to revisit webkins after a, what is it, like a decade? I was excited to spin the wheel of wow and complete my daily gem hunt. But you know, what was at the top of my list for revisiting this website? What was my favorite part of webkins growing up? The one feature that stood out to me the most? Well, it was none other than maize and hamsters, of course. So you can just imagine and how distraught I was with everything going on in the world to now on top of it add the, you know, removal of maize and hamsters from the map of Kinsville. Was I insanely late to this discovery? Yes, um, almost five years late in fact. But that did not stop me from being in absolute shambles about it at the time. So today we're going to be diving into the infamous maize and hamsters from Webkins and answering the question for ourselves. What was its downfall? Spoiler alert, aged. Now before we get there, we must answer this question for the cultured or the uncultured more importantly. What was maize and hamsters? So Maze and Hamsters was a feature that debuted in summer of 2010. By entering the feature code of a plush or virtual hamster, players could gain access to a whole new 3D world in which their hamsters could run through mazes in a ball, and I say whole new world literally because that's what it was. Like the graphics on Webkins are a lot different than Maze and Hamsters, which unfortunately had its faults sometimes because the amount of lag I experienced on that game was not for the weak, let's just say. Don't hit me up, only real ones who survived the lag of Maze and Hamsters know. Anyways, adopting a hamster would allow players to access their hamster and its ball within the Maze and Hamsters universe. Um, in October of 2010, players were also given the ability to um, play with hamsters in Webkin's world, um, like a normal pet, because it didn't start off that way. However, entering their code does not extend the expiration date of an account. Hamsters also do not come with adoption gifts, and they do not like count towards the adoption total for receiving um, super bed gift boxes. And we can't talk about this game without highlighting the cute plush hamsters. Um, there were 16 in total to collect, which included the following. Petunia, Sunshine, Presto, Sweetie, Snowflake, Honey, Pixie, Willow, Waffles, Sparkle, Cookie, Hope, Spooky, Cinnamon, Carrot, Nick, and these are just the ones who have stuffed animals of them. You know, you could buy virtual pets as well online. Now, personally, I only ever had two as a kid, which were Petunia and Sparkle. I am just now finding out their names for the first time because I renamed Petunia to Hickaroonie. <laughs> and because of that, I kind of assumed I made up the name for Sparkle too, but I guess not. I don't remember Webkins coming with names to begin with. And like, I can tell I, I named like most of mine because there's just spelling mistake after spelling mistake. Now, when talking about the world of mazes and hamsters, it was home to two sections, the hamster hamlet and the mazes themselves. So in the hamster hamlet, players could use their hamsters to explore the 3D world and play games, which would earn moolah, um, aka the currency in this game, um, that could be used for the maze and mall. A subsection of this was the popular moolah mountain, in which you'd race down a mountain as fast as you could, collecting coins along the way, all before your time ran out. These coins could then be used towards um, buying stuff at the maze and mall, which I didn't go over what they actually have there, but it's very, it's the key component of this game, if you will. The stuff they sold um, ranged from tubes for your mazes um, and items for your actual webkin's room, and we can't forget the um, infamous hamster ball designs. So yeah, pretty um, top tier stuff, if I would say so myself. You could only play Moolah Mountain once a day, which wasn't that all in common with games within Kinsville in general, but examples within this like universe specifically are um, key craze and gift grab. Key craze was where you had to, you were like walking around a little village in search of keys um, to bring back in hopes that it'd be the right one to open this little like treasure chest and then I think you'd get a prize from that. And then gift grab was, well, 
pretty self-explanatory. You'd walk around, um, this one did not have a timer, and um, you could grab up to three gifts, and then you would have to wait another day to grab more, three more gifts. Surprisingly, there was not a lot of documentation of this game, like, online, and I literally couldn't figure out if, like, the challenges were a subsection of Hamlet, uh, Hamster Hamlet, or if they were, like, a separate thing, but I'm gonna categorize them as, like, a similar thing. I think it was, like, a separate button you click, obviously. They were separated into three distinct zones, and it was the forest, the mountains, and the lagoon zone. The challenges were various, like, from my limited info I could find um, researching, but collecting zums was by far the most interesting thing I found. Does anyone remember them? I remember wanting one for my world so bad, or my world. I, I wanted like to adopt one basically so bad, and I only ever found one with no code at the thrift store, so like it wasn't actually added in my game. I could never find them in the store. Also, I am so mad that I missed out on this. Um, I don't think I actually mentioned that before. Um, a lot of this stuff I was just coming in blind to as much as you guys, uh, who have never heard of this or like don't remember much because I was a maze girly, okay? I didn't like really care about this subsection. I didn't make my own mazes. I played the community mazes, which we'll get into later. So this stuff is like new to me and it like makes me kind of mad because first of all, the Lagoon Zone is so pretty. It like reminds me of Pixie Hollow, which was another like online game I was obsessed with. Um, and of course there's that franchise, which I've mentioned on this channel before. So like maybe if I only just like pushed myself to do it, take a challenge, um, I wouldn't have missed out on this. I think this is a separate like subsection mini game because um, you could explore really at your own pace or select challenge for even more fun in their words, um, which means extra moolah and better prizes, which I kind of like because like I know I'm really bad at doing anything timed because then I'm like, oh my god, oh my god it's, it's, timed. it's timed. You could also do as many challenges as you wanted, like unlike some of the features like I mentioned earlier within Kinsville, um, you weren't limited to one challenge per day, which is kind of nice. But now we're at the part of the video that I'm most excited for. Me personally, I was more of a maze kid when it came to this game. Um, I don't even think I realized there's an other side of this world to begin with. I mean, in my defense, it's called Maze and Hamsters. So as I said, I was going to all of that, kind of like uh, just as blind as someone who's never heard of this or doesn't remember a lot. Anyway, what were mazes? Well, you could do one, um, explore mazes made by the Webkins team. And with this, you could earn coins, special prizes, etc. Or you could do what I usually did, and I know many other kids did, is explore mazes made by others within the community. Basically how you create these mazes is with parts bought from the Mazen Mall, which I mentioned earlier. That's how, like, that's why these mazes were so cool, because not everyone could afford the parts to build their own. So like, seeing like, people who had spent hours and hours and hours building their coins, or had like, bought them, um, and they have like, all the cool, like, I know there's one where it's like a windmill and it spins around, or there's this one where it's like, you're in like a swing and your ball like jumps to the other swing. I remember those distinctly. Or there's one where it's like, it's like a vine. You're like, you're like in a tree. <laughs> I don't think you're in a tree. You're like outside the tree. It's like a little vine slide. Anyways, just a lot of cool like um, tubes like that, like fun. I almost said transitions. Am I making an edit? But lots of cool stuff to explore that, you know, you might have not even known was a thing like in the shop and um, you, now you don't have to buy it. You can just explore someone else's maze and like everyone, their goal was always to get to like the top popular mazes. I don't even know if I ever made a maze because like I didn't really play Hamlet, um, Hamlet. I didn't really know the Hamster Hamlet was a thing. I literally don't remember. I have no knowledge of playing the Hamster Hamlet. Like, when I was researching this, I was actually kind of confused. I was like, wait, what? I had to look at, like, the WebKids tutorial videos. That's literally all that is left because this game is now gone. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because all I remember is playing the freaking mazes. Maybe it was, like, added later or something? But, like, I played this game for good amount of time, a couple of years. As I was saying before I got distracted, um, but yeah, you'd create these mazes with parts bought from the Mazen Mall, and then you could upload them for all to see and play if you wanna get technical. But with all this in mind, you're probably like left asking the same question I was. Well, what happened? A key part of um, the Maze and Hamsters feature was how it's built in Unity web player. 
which must be downloaded before the game can be played. Like, if you don't have Unity Web Player installed, the feature would just prompt you to download it before proceeding. This reliance on Unity Web Player is also what resulted in the removal of the Maze and Hamsters feature. It wasn't a choice that Webkins really wanted to make, but it was the choice that unfortunately had to be made. As many browsers dropped the support for the plugin in 2015, so as a result, many players could not access Maze and Hamsters, which led to the eventual removal from Webkin's world on September 9th, 2015. So for those who are not really aware of what Unity Web Player was, this is very similar to the situation that happened with Flash, like only a couple years later, and how many games that affected how much media we've literally lost from that. Um, a lot of it being stuff that was, you know, within our childhoods. But to end this video on bittersweet note, fortunately, there is hope to recover Maze and Hamsters. As um, similar, similarly to other like discontinued games, the asset files have been found um, for Maze and Hamsters, and they were finally found like semi-recently. Um, although there isn't a set team working um, towards this effort that I could find, I see the interest is clearly there with how much people miss this game, so it just leaves me with you know, hope that the right people will come along and recover it someday. We've seen such an effort with Flash games, like Pixie Hollow rewritten, Moshi Monsters rewritten, the LPS Online rewritten that's currently in progress. So I do have hope that someone will come along and, you know, hopefully revive this game for us. I really would love that because this is like, it's like Webkins is still there, but the one part I liked about Webkins is gone, so it's like kind of bittersweet. But yeah, that was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and let me know if you guys have ever played Maze and Hamsters, um, and what your favorite part of Webkins was. If not, I feel like when people talk about Webkins and like nostalgia, I never hear Maze and Hamsters brought up, like vaguely. Like I've had to specifically search out Maze and Hamsters to be like, oh my god, that was my favorite part of Webkins. I was obsessed with it. Like I don't just hear people mention Maze and Hamsters as much as I hear them mention like, I don't know, like the Curious Shop, you know, the Arcade, other features in Webkins, it's just not like common, you know? Not shade to any of those things because, you know, I ate them up too. But uh, I think part of why I like this game too is I used to have like little minor like special interests on certain animals and one of the ones I had was on hamsters. I think it was because I had a hamster like at the time, um, but I think that's a part of why I became so like fixated on this game. Like, it was a part of it. So yeah, I will see you guys in the very next video.